Hi world, it's the 30th of October, it's about 2.30pm in the afternoon and this is my forecast for November and I'm a little bit earlier than normal. I wouldn't normally do this until sort of the first of the month but there's so much going on. In 24 hours time we've got the full moon in Taurus on the 31st of October and that full moon takes place about um let's have a look it takes place at oh, almost exactly 24 hours from now 10 to 3 in the afternoon UK time tomorrow and this is a crazy full moon I've done videos on this it's pretty crazy out there at the moment there's all types of stuff going on in the world and where there's not lockdowns there's terrorism and there's lots of people getting angry about personal freedoms versus lockdown and mask wearing or not. And don't even get me started on the American election. And then two days, three days after the full moon in early November, Mercury stops going retrograde. Now, Mercury will stop going retrograde at 5.45 p.m. UK time on Tuesday the 3rd of November that is quarter to one in the afternoon in New York right in the middle of voting on the day of the election so it's going to be fascinating what happens now it's pretty clear that there's not going to be uh, an overall outright clear winner announced on the 3rd of November not with Mercury stationing and not with the postal votes debacle and and we'll see what happens. But shortly after that, Mars stops going retrograde. Now, Mars will actually stop going retrograde at about just after midnight UK time on, the, on Saturday the 14th of November. Mars has been retrograde for quite a long time, nine weeks. And with Mars stopping going retrograde on the 14th, you'd think, OK, there's going to be a shift around that time. There is. But bearing in mind what's going on in the world around COVID and the American elections and various other political shenanigans, don't even get me started on the absolute shambles and debacle and the complete failure of the so-called politicians in Britain. You think you've got it bad in your country? Hmm. Um, they're a disgrace, they really are. Just before this, on the 12th of November, at about 9 p.m. in the evening UK time, Jupiter and Pluto are conjunct for the final time in 13 years. Jupiter's been conjunct Pluto since March of this year. Saturn was conjunct Pluto in January of this year. Jupiter conjunct Pluto conjunct Saturn in Capricorn has really exposed the fallacy of, of governments. The ideas of uh, people purporting to reign and rule over their populations in most cases has proved just complete a farce a fallacy there are one or two very enlightened countries where the ruling politicians are very very popular i quote new zealand to a lesser extent australia um, these are the exceptions rather than the rule with jupiter conjunct pluto the overheating pluto in capricorn the transformation of government, the transformation of politics, the transformation of governance, of structure and order in the idea of nationhood. With Jupiter conjuncting Pluto for the last eight months, there's been an overheating and over exaggeration. Things have gone to extremes. And this extremism in the short term through to the middle of November is going to get worse before it gets better. But as Jupiter clears Pluto, by the middle of December, things seem astrologically to change quite fast. We've got Jupiter clearing Pluto on the 12th. We've got Mars stopping going backwards early morning on the 14th. And then on the 15th of November, we've got a new moon at about 5 a.m. UK time at 23 degrees of Scorpio, sextiling Jupiter, sextiling Pluto, sextiling Saturn, suggesting that this is the start of a new development, a new option, a new potential. 
Now, by the time we're into the second half of November, Mercury is clearing its retrograde shadow. It clears around the 16th, 17th. Mars is beginning to inch forward. Both Jupiter and Saturn have cleared Pluto and are approaching each other in the sky. And you can still see them in the sky at the moment. It's getting close to the sunset point, but they're getting closer and closer. And of course, the Jupiter-Pluto conjunction, Jupiter-Saturn conjunction, I'm sorry, will be just before the solstice. And we'll do some more stuff on this one in the coming week or two. But we're going to be seeing the end of Jupiter conjunct Pluto and Saturn conjunct Pluto as we get into the second half of November, the end of Mars retrograde and Mercury retrograde. And it honestly does seem that the more we get towards the end of November, the clearer and lighter things are becoming. Neptune stops going retrograde at the end of November. The, the, the full moon in Gemini on the 30th of November is a relatively tame one. But the new moon on the 15th of November is brilliant. It's possibly the best new moon of the year with the aspects it's making to Jupiter and Pluto. And this is bringing, this is the kind of forerunner of what's to come as we get into January with the new moon on the 13th of January at 23 degrees of Capricorn conjuncting Pluto. And that does symbolise some type of fresh start. Of course, by that time, both Jupiter and Saturn will have moved into Aquarius. Mars will have moved into Taurus. It's going to be a very different ball game, and there's not going to be anything like the levels of antagonism, anger, or even hatred that there has been out there this year. The Jupiter-Pluto conjunction has really aroused the extremism of people's antipathy towards each other. I personally have been accused of being a left-wing puppet, a right-wing fascist, a cocaine-snorting hedonist, uh, an ignoramus, and, and that's just the tip of the iceberg. You can't please all the people all the time. You can't really please all the people some of the time either. And at the end of the day, one of the things that this year has shown us is that we're all responsible for our own perception. We all choose to see the, way, the world the way we do. It's, we, we can choose to be influenced by the news, whether you consider it sham or to what level you think it's fake or government influence. Certainly, I would tend to trust the more organised news reports than I would social media. Personal opinion, that is. But we're all responsible for our own opinions. And because we're all responsible for what we choose to believe, we're also all responsible for our own attitudes, philosophies, beliefs, and behavioural patterns. So we can choose to be nasty to each other. Or we can choose not to be nasty to each other and to be kind to each other. And I hope that as we get into the middle of November, we're going to start the very first signs of, of, of a sort of return to relative sanity. And as we get into mid-January, I think we're going to be looking back on 2020 and going... We've been mad. Because if we continue the way we are, the, the disintegration of human relations and the conflict between people, countries, political parties is going to get so bad that we're going to descend into a state of total anarchy globally. And that's not in anyone's interest. Not especially if you have young children or grandchildren. So I suggest that the first two weeks of November, and I've just done a lot of forecasts for a channel that I do forecasts for, for the month. And it's really clear to me, looking at all the different signs of a zodiac, that the first couple of weeks of November are very much around sensible people staying low because there's going to be a lot of headless chickens out there with Mars still retrograde, Mercury standing still, the American elections, the, the aftermath from tomorrow's full moon, the, the headless chickens are running the roost, is a phrase I've been using to describe the first two weeks of November. But as we get into that middle period of November, the 12th to the 16th, I honestly think there's some type of turnaround happening. And I hope, passionately, that from then on, sanity will begin slowly to reassert itself. And the more we get into December and January, and a lot of planets change sign, and a lot of the influences become not so much easier, but different. 
that our collective and individual perceptions, attitudes, opinions and beliefs will change as well. Remember, one world, seven billion different planets. We're all responsible for our own perception and the way we choose to see things. So what have you got to lose by being kind to each other? Catch you later, world. Have a good November. Bye.